Hello and welcome to the Conscious Communion Podcast, where we traverse through the inner dwellings of the human experience through conversation. I'm your host, Danae. Join me as we explore the interconnection of creativity and community. Tenley is a Pilates instructor and dancer with a deep relationship to movement as a form of exploration towards our own evolve. With a Bachelor's of Arts in theater and product development, Tenley has an unquenchable passion for creativity, expressing herself through dance, photography, and visual design. As an encouraging communicator, teacher, and friend, Tenley is willing to share her gained wisdom and perspective with anyone she encounters. She moved to Portland in 2020 and has been consciously cultivating a community that aligns with every rhythm. In March, she opened Rhythms Community Studio as a culmination to what and who has inspired her along the way. It is with great excitement to welcome the inspiring and motivating Tenley. Hello and welcome for a very special episode with my dear friend Tenley. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm so honored to have you in this space and to be chatting about what feels ever present in your current moment where you're at in this, this beautiful journey of life. It's usually a lot. So hopefully I'll have some sense of direction here because yeah, I mean, there's many different things that I feel like have led me to this point and I'm excited to share them with you. Yeah. I'm so excited. Tenley owns her own studio rhythms PDX in Portland, Oregon. And it's been a process to be a business owner, a woman Mm -hmm. of color in Portland, Oregon, starting your own business. What has that been like for you? Well, it's been interesting because I picked Portland specifically because I knew that I wanted to have a studio and I came from LA in 2020, which was a wild year for everybody, but my year started off particularly wild, um, just with the passing of my father and then the pandemic hitting and the fitness industry was affected pretty substantially. A lot of studios closed, um, but the people who have made it through like really have made it through and are solid. So as I was experiencing all this in LA, I just knew that I wanted to be somewhere a little bit smaller and um, more community focused versus like stardom focused. So Portland had appealed to me for a while and I didn't really realize the lack of diversity until I got here, but in an interesting way, because there is a lack of diversity, it's been easier for me to connect with people who um, I can find commonalities with. So in that regard, and um, yeah, I mean, people stick out more, just like literally, they literally stick out more. So you, um, there's, yeah, I've, I feel like I've, there have been challenges, of course, but ultimately I feel like I am in the right place at the right time mm-hmm. and I'm not going to be scared away by lack of di- diversity because otherwise things are never going to progress and change. And mm-hmm. I think that um, just a lot of the people of color that I've met in Portland have really strong missions and purposes and a lot of them are very similar to mine. So it's felt um, it's felt inspiring and exciting to get to be a part of that, especially in a time where race is such a topic. And um, we talked a little bit about racial identity. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that just living here, it's never been more apparent to me that I am not white in my life because I grew up on the East Coast and the East Coast is very diverse. So... It wasn't a culture shock to me because um, just of my schooling and stuff like that. But yeah, I I don't know. It's it's been um, it's been an experience. It's an experience. Yeah, absolutely. And especially with the work that you're doing with fitness specifically. Yes. Also interweaving yes. spirituality in a sense with some of the spaces that you cultivate in your space. Mm-hmm. Those two worlds collide. 
They do. And they can, you, you stick out, but it's in an, but it's almost an opportunity it for is, you. And that's kind of how I see it. And I've reframed that, I think, a bit in my head. Obviously, I have ups and downs about how I feel about certain things because what the wellness market and the mm. spiritual market is driven by is very whitewashed. And um, learning to be authentic within those indus- industry sort of conventions has um, just been something that I've really been working hard with. And that's mm. why I've been really committed to taking all of my own photos for the studio. And um, I'm a very visual person. So it helps me to see like the mission translated through these images. Mm. Um, so, Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. As a photographer, I'm curious because that, that also plays into you being a business owner Mm -hmm. and you not having to outsource that work. You get to do it for yourself. So you're not only a Pilates instructor, you're not only a movement extraordinaire, Mm -hmm. a dancer who gets to hold space in in dance classes and in your Pilates classes, but you're also a business owner who's creating a safe space for others to come and be. Yeah. So what has that been like? Woo. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, what has that been like? I think that in order to create a space where people really feel inclusive, you kind of have had to experience some form of discrimination in your life. And maybe that's not true for everyone, but that's definitely true in my case. And specifically like within the fitness industry, like I said, like the standard is, can be very geared towards a certain market, which is fine. But um, what I've found is just that yeah, in order to really be inclusive, like you have to be able to relate to people and many different types of people. Um, and my life experiences have been very diverse. So that's given me the ability to be able to see things from different perspectives and be able to kind of roll with different mm-hmm. personalities and energies because I don't feel like everyone should be like me and I don't want everyone to be like me. And in fact, like, honestly, if people could remove the me a lot of the times and just worry about themselves, like that would be ideal because, um, I think when we try too hard to like fit in, then it kind of robs of robs us of our individual identity. And some people are meant to be in packs and some people are not meant to be in packs. And, um, I definitely don't think I am the type to be kind of like in a pack, which is interesting because I'm now building a community. But I think what you see is a community of individuals Mm. who um, want to be able to explore themselves and creativity and their minds and their connection with other people in a, in a space where they don't feel like they have to try to fit. So yeah. um, I think just the process of really tuning into that mission has been tuning out a lot of the Mm. other stuff and um, learning just through direct experience, what it was that I wasn't aligned with my values and my purpose and um, how I saw myself being in service to people. Mm. That's beautiful. And I think also, you having the opportunity to create your own paradigm is a really beautiful shift. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's been a process for you to find this rhythm for yourself. Oh, the rhythm for myself. Dance to the beat of your own drum. We all go through that, but I would love for you to share what that process and that's it's so interesting that you used that phrase to dance at the beat of your own drum that's a really interesting phrase that you used because I went to this kind of wild school when I was 13 through 15 um 
basically because my parents just didn't have the awareness around mental health at the time. And so I think that there was a lot of stigma and um, also coming from a religious family, there's even more of that. So yeah, they weren't able to see things the way that I'm now able to see them. And um, it kind of took me down this fun path of exploration, but yeah. So while I was there, one of the things that we had to do, and this is actually one of the most positive takeaways I had from this is we had to write down a like mission statement sort of. So you went mm. through these seminars in order to progress through the program and it was an interesting layout, but um, I actually got a lot from the seminars because they were focused on having you being really truthful with yourself, which honestly, they kind of like gaslit you sometimes, but, but writing down a mission statement from a very young age, it taught me that like, I could see myself mm. even through all of the chaos around me because what I wrote down was, ah, oh, dang it. I wish I had the three words. It'll probably come to me, but dancing to the beat of my own drum was on there. And I wrote this at like 14. So mm. in my head already, I was thinking like, I, my individuality is important to me. Mm. And, um, I was kind of like the odd duckling there, but I also like ran that school at the same time. <laughs> so it was really interesting, but it taught me like, I have leadership capabilities and, um, it just, yeah. I mean, when you spend that much time in a facility like that, you tend to think about a lot of things. So I would just stay up at night and maybe this is why sleep is still a thing for me, but I would stay up at night and just dream about my life outside of there. And Honestly, like, yeah, it was rough being there, but I am such like a dreamer that I can kind of like live in my own head in any situation. <laughs> so um, in my head, I just created the reality that I wanted to be in. And now here we are. So that's beautiful. And resilience is an interesting word. It's I, I believe that there was resilience there, but also choice. Yeah. And I think choice is a big one that folks don't maybe talk about enough. Mm. I think that going through grief and all of the other traumatic indications that 2020 brought us. Yeah. So not only were you dealing with the collective grief that we were all experiencing with the pandemic and being isolated, but you were grieving a very specific thing. Mm -hmm. And then even still, you chose to take yourself through this process to prepare yourself to become a business owner. Yeah. And that to me shows a lot of creative intelligence. Thanks. Yeah. That's such a nice phrase. Ooh. It's true. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, because even... Even moving through our grief, even moving through our emotions and processing them, that takes a, a sense of creative capability. Yeah, it does. It does. Because you have to re-strategize sometimes. And I think we think of grief as a linear process, but it is not. Mm -hmm. It is not. It bounces all over. I don't even know the dang steps, but it's like whatever the order that they say it is, uh-uh. Yeah, it's that and more. It's that and more. It's that and more. But I think I'm really comfortable with grief and darkness and not like actual like darkness, nighttime darkness. I'm actually scared of the dark a little bit because probably there's I'm, you know, you know, so there's um. well, I think it's really an understanding of like humanity that I'm after. Um, and this is a little bit of a segue, but we talked about like spirituality looking a certain way when we were 
talking about what we might uncover today. And I think that we do think of spirituality being this like light, beautiful, refreshed looking person. And I do not look like that. A lot of the times Mm -hmm. I am struggling Mm -hmm. and it doesn't mean that I'm less spiritual because of it. Um, so returning to your question, can you circle back just so I make sure that I, yeah, the creative intelligence that it's taken. And I think it's also important to note because we were talking about this specifically, you and I both have the tendency to want to live in that center of darkness and in the existential kink aspect of, Ooh, it, that hurt feels good. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, because it's exploratory in a way, and I'm very creatively uh, motivated by (laughs) those dark energies. And actually living in LA, one of my, all of my roommates taught me many different lessons, but one of my roommates really taught me about embracing darkness because she's a badass rope dartist rope darter. Um, (laughs) and she really channeled her anger Mm. into her movement. And it gave me this different perspective on Mm. one, like what does feminine energy look like, but two, like what, what can we, you know, we don't have to be a certain way. We can express whatever it is that we feel called to express and that can fluctuate and that can change. So I think, when it comes to creative intelligence, you have to be open to being flexible and willing to change. And I think that's what's been able to get me to this point in my life is that I really am comfortable with change. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, some of that has come from uh, stuff from childhood that was out of my control. But I think as soon as I was able to reframe and process a lot of that hurt and that grief and that pain and could reframe it to be like, okay, this has given me sensitivity and perspective, Mm -hmm. um, has honestly changed my life. Mm -hmm. And, um, I spent a lot of my twenties just trying to uncover all of that hurt and name it so that, Mm -hmm. um, I could just move forward with my life. And so I think when it came to 2020, I had already been spending years kind of uh, just, I guess, composting. I like that word. Yeah. I feel like it's composting because it's not like it's not a part of me anymore. It's getting (laughs) recycled into something else. But like, I'm like, okay, we're throwing you out the window. Um, I don't need to keep you in my house stinking up the whole place. So yeah, that, um, and I think also just my, I think our constitutions play a huge role in how we navigate these things. So when it comes to, if you look at my constitutions, when it comes to astrology or Enneagram or whatever, they all kind of say that like, this mm-hmm. is kind of where I'm supposed to be is mm. um, kind of this like reflective person. So learning when to come out of that and when to like, yeah, just take those reflections and turn them into something Mm. um, is I guess what you're now seeing at the studio because it's every lesson from every experience that I have had my entire life. So I feel really fortunate that I get to do something like this because it is a monetary commitment that I feel like a lot of people don't talk about because money is uncomfortable. Um, And I would say for people who are scared to take that leap, a friend of mine said to me to think of it as like another bank account. Like you're Mm. just, you know, and, um, it's a lot of hard work, but I think that with anything, I keep saying purpose, but that is really something that I've been trying to hone in on is, Like, are my actions or the people around me are, is what I'm eating, is what I'm watching, 
is it serving my purpose? And a lot of times, no, and that's okay. And getting over that imposter syndrome of being like, yeah, I'm not this perfect wellness bee out here, but I can still hold space for people who want to grow and transform and explore and play and connect. So Yes. I love that. <laughs> no. And I think it's, I think it's important also to know, yes, it's necessary to think about the things that are in alignment with you, the friends that are in alignment with you, the food, so on and so forth. However, how are we to know what's good for us if we don't also veer off the track once in a while to at least let us let ourselves explore yeah. and stay curious And it's that existential kink in us, all humans, we all at some point in time need to go to that, that edge. Mm -hmm. How far can I go here? How far can I push myself in this uncomfortable situation Mm -hmm. before I'm brought back to, nope, I'm in my knowing regardless Mm -hmm. if I'm veering off the track, I can still stay in the centered place. I love edges across the board. Yes. Exploring the edge. It's important in movement, but it's also important mentally. And that's something that Joseph Pilates actually talks about in his Mm. book, Return to Life. And um, I think is really important to talk about when you're talking about fitness, because fitness, yes, you're taking care of your body, you're changing your muscles, you're changing your tissues. But as we know, that is not independent from the rest of your system. So any change that's happening in the tissues is also happening everywhere else, like your digest digestion. Nobody really thinks about that as far as like, why we move. Everyone just kind of wants to get fit, which I'm not opposed to. I love being fit. But um, I think that when we, if we really want to talk about holistic care and holistic health and holistic wellness, like what that means is being able to see that relationship. A thousand percent. And that really even goes into the feminine and masculine Mm. energies at play and how we can play between both worlds and how we can exercise our muscles in more than one way. It's so true. Right? Yeah. Well, in the, just because you're embracing feminine energy does not, it doesn't look a certain way. You're, representation of feminine energy is going to be different than mine and masculine would be the same. Um, So that also has influenced my teaching because I've taught mostly in formats that are seen as very feminine. Um, And even just in getting the images together for the space, Mm -hmm. I'm like, shoot, this is lean and real feminine. So trying to find the balance between those energies Mm -hmm. to also remain inclusive because I think it's important to include the men and the men need this the most. Okay. They better come in (laughs) and they have been, they actually have been um, more men have been attending classes than anybody else, which is interesting. That's amazing. Yeah. So, wow. I know there's some opportunity there. I think to, Like I'm real comfortable in my masculine. And so I think I can connect Mm. with some of these men's a little bit. Um, Not all of them, but (laughs) the ones where it's like, yeah, this is open. And we're like, I feel a brotherly energy with Mm. a lot of men, but not in like, I'm your sister. Like it feels like I too am their brother, you know? Mm. And um, so I think also like in terms of leadership, understanding that like, you can't judge people and you need to be able to like actually have love for the types of people that um, are coming through your doors. Like they took the time out of their day to come in. So Mm. the least we can do, you know, absolutely hold the space for those folks that potentially may not be feeling the belonging that we were talking about. The belonging's huge. Everybody just wants to belong. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter, like, the Mm. issue. I feel like... It's huge. That's what it comes... 
all the pain, all the suffering in the world, like people just want to feel safe and it's just such a confusing, we're in an upheaval right now, which is confusing for people. And in the long run, it will be better, but right now it's confusing Mm -hmm. and we've been isolating all of us for how long now? So it just felt needed to first pull myself out of my hibernation, but also to help facilitate others doing the same for themselves. Because at the end of the day, like we can't hold this, the burdens of the world alone. And I also think that when we realize the common threads between Mm. what we're all experiencing that is how we actually progress as a society. Yeah. So like, we kind of have to do, we have to do our own work, but um, be able to support each other when needed and when yeah. invited. Absolutely. And I think so much of doing our own work, it's, it's really interesting. It almost takes us to this place of, doing the collective work on an individual level, right? That's that's what it is. That's what it is. And um, I don't really love labels unless they're, I mean, labels are helpful in giving us a format to understand what's going on in the world. But sometimes I hesitate, especially when it comes to uh, religious affiliations but I view Buddhism actually more philosophical versus mm-hmm. like you're not subscribing to um, like one figure per se. So it's more about the relationship with the self for the collective. Mm-hmm. And I think finding that and um, leaning into that really helped me to find my way in this world and process a lot of the anger and scary shit. So yeah, absolutely. And just not judging the mind. Yeah. Buddhist philosophy has been so helpful for me with that specifically. Mm-hmm. Just allowing things to pass, yeah. giving ourselves grace for feeling it all because it all belongs. Yeah. Just like we all belong, it all belongs. Have you read the book Belonging? I haven't. By, okay, I can't remember her name, but she's a Canadian author. Tokopa, I believe is her name. And um, I have heard her speak Mm. and found her book. Some of it doesn't resonate because of the language she uses. Again, I get just weird with like labeling too specifically. Um, but ultimately it taught me that our belonging, and I think we know this, it sounds so cliche, like we have to find that belonging within ourselves. Yes. Like that's it. So I wish there was an easy way to do that. I don't think there is, and Mm -hmm. there's no shortcuts. And I think you just kind of have to like know that you're in it for the long haul and be okay with the ups and downs and find people who are sharing that journey with you. And that's been the most helpful thing for me is finding those people and finding those friends who really get it and almost that you don't have to explain things to and rant to, but they just know. And, um, than the ones who like listen to all your many processings of this world around us, um, which I think we're all just feeling like a lot of stimulation from. Mm. Um, and mm-hmm. then where are we going next year? We got election coming up, all sorts of things. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. And I think that also, it's interesting that goes into the fluidity and flexibility that you also experience in dance. Yeah, it does. So what does that process look like for you to Ooh. move your body in that way, in a creative way, mm-hmm. but to allow yourself to process somatically through dance? That's a really good question. That's a really good question because I was just talking to someone about this the other day who's a year older than me. 
I keep thinking I'm 33. I'm actually not 33. I'm 32. So he's two years older than me. But we were talking about establishing a dance identity as an adult Mm. because I did not have access to a lot of the training that I think a lot of other Pilates teachers have. Specifically, a lot of Pilates teachers are intensely trained dancers. Mm -hmm. And like, I've danced, but I didn't dance like that, you know? So that's been that's been something that I've had to overcome in a way Mm. within myself to feel like, okay, yeah, I can still dance and I'm still allowed to express what is what I feel in my body. And I've always been Mm. someone who moved my body and my sisters will tell you that like girl had a six pack from the time she was eight. (laughs) Um, not intentionally, but it's just like, I just have, I'm a naturally athletic person. These are my genetics. So dance is a way for me to use that genetic gift and explore, um, in a format that doesn't feel so like, I don't know, um, competitive, but we talked a little bit about the balance between energies of feminine and masculine and, um, I started hooping actually in 20, let's see, 2014. And I started hooping because I lived with, I'll name drop her because she don't care, Allie, um, Allie Pristus. She's an amazing painter, visual artist, hooper. I just was obsessed with her and she was good friends with some of my friends. I just loved her and we lived together and I was enamored with, the hooping and she gifted me one when I went off to my first little transformational festival and taught me like just about the sacredness of the circle Mm. and that like the circle is our safe space to explore within. Yeah, I know. So I remember sitting, I don't even know who we saw because I didn't know any of these artists at the time, but I remember her like plopping me down in my hoop And we were sitting watching the show and, you know, there might've been some other things involved and I was just like stimulated because it was my first festival. And, um, she was like, this is your safe space. Like this is yours to make your own, to explore within like, yeah. So that always stuck with me and it made me feel like, um, I just wanted to be playful And I don't really, my style of hooping and my style of dance is somewhat technique focused, but more interpretive. Um, And then the style of dances that I do train in are modern and contemporary. So they lean more interpretive. Well, that's like the whole basis of them. Um, But yeah, so it's just, it's been fun to build this identity and kind of like learn from people, see people who inspire me, but it's not so much that I'm like, I'm finding my own style. They're helping me to, they're helping to, they've helped encourage me to really embrace like the way that I want to move, um, which is like, I guess it really just depends. I'm very musically motivated and I tend to go through phases where I will only think about like one song and I just kind of, I listen to that song over and 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 over again until I know it really well. And I do this when I'm teaching too, when I'm really in my teaching flow with Pilates is I know that playlist, like the back of my hand, I know when every beat hits because it helps you to be more in your flow if you kind of like know. So knowing the music and um, really being able to connect with the music, I think has helped me to feel and, uh, grow into this new dance identity, which I don't really even know how I would describe it other than as like interpretive. And sometimes I use a hoop. Um, do I want to perform? Yes, maybe. I think that's like a hidden dream of mine Mm. that I'm, uh, coming to terms with because I've always felt like I did not that like there wasn't the space for me mm. and I'm tall too so like tall dancers are not very common like tall female dancers and they might be like five seven but I'm six foot like that's you ain't got nothing on me um <laughs> so 
Yeah, that like learning to move within my, f- mm. I keep saying framework, but framework literally um, has been something and like learning to ground and connect with my ancestral roots and moving to moving from spirit versus moving from ego. Um, yeah, these have been huge themes for me and um, I'm constantly using dance just to lean into those themes, whether it's gender expression or um, racial identity and expression. And um, yeah, sometimes I just feel like it's like a vortex is how I would describe it. And it applies to what I'm teaching too, where I think, again, it comes from just like absorbing, but also maybe being connected to something higher Maybe I say maybe I'm like, it's definitely being connected to something higher Um, where I just feel like it's really my throat that opens um, when I'm teaching and I hear myself and people say this when they're being recorded, but it's, it's a little bit different. It's not that I don't like my voice when I'm being recorded. I like my voice plenty fine. It's like, this there's someone else involved in here. You know what I mean? It just, it's more than me. And I think ultimately when it comes to movement, that's how I see it. I don't really Mm. see it as like a me thing. Um, so that was kind of a long winded answer, but yeah, I feel like me exploring this freedom and this like sort of non-technical, but Mm. still technical path. Cause We got to know the rules to know when to break the rules. Yes. Yeah. And that really applies to movement because like you have to know when to be stable and then when you can let go um, so that you can embrace your rhythm and your unique beat, which is another expression that I love that kind of ties back to that Um, dancing to the beat of our own drum. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was something else I was going to say on that, but I'm curious just yeah, no, what I'm, came up for you when I was I So much. I think that especially having had the pleasure to go to your jam. The jam, the jam. The jam. Would you describe a little bit about what the jam is? Oh, I love the jam. And I think the jam is going to evolve, but it is a collaborative interpretive group dance experience and it's super fun because what do we do we did the collaborative playlist which i thought was really fun because again you move to your own music differently Mm -hmm. but of course other people's music is going to inspire you but like when it's when you really know it it just hits differently and you yeah i don't know i think you can get more connected to the other energies at play But yeah, so we have movement prompts and um, I have an acquaintance in LA who has these movement prompt cards that I have acquired from her recently, which I'm really excited about because we'll use them at the next one. Um, But the one that I found the most interesting was the levels one where we were exploring a different level. Do you remember that? Mm Mm-hmm. I, it stuck with me because I'm either like on the floor oh, yes. rolling around yes. or I'm like up here, like <laughs> wiggling my arms and back. So it's taught me to like find mm-hmm. that middle level. Mm-hmm. So I would say the jam is just about exploring flow, but also how your mind perceives like improv too, because totally. I don't know if that makes sense, but you know, I think you get what I'm trying to say there because we talked at the beginning about how like, Improv is intimidating and I don't know what I'm doing. And you can feel the shift in energy when people are starting and we're all like, we don't know what we're doing here. Um, Don't look at me or are you looking at me or am I looking at you? All those thoughts that go through. So part of the jam and part of Bliss Body, um, which is ecstatic dance, is about unwinding that and just letting yourself be. Which is vital, especially during these times. I'd say. Yeah. It was super helpful. And I know that I, that was the case for everyone. Yeah. We all talked about it after and it was really clear that 
we all came in with some sort of baggage about being perceived a certain way and moving a certain way in front of strangers who we don't know. And then finding flow together. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful interpretation of synergy. Yeah. And essentially what you're, mission for the space is it is it is in different types of modalities and that's I was talking to a friend of mine who's a Pilates instructor and we both left our corporate job at the same time in San Diego and she had I think had already been teaching Pilates then So it's kind of interesting we went on a similar path, but she is a classical Pilates teacher, which is a little bit different. Um, And she is super strong. Like, I cannot believe how strong she is. It's ridiculous. And flexible, which is rare that someone's strong and flexible. Mm -hmm. But anyways, I was talking about when we were leaving, we were leaving our job. Um, D2D refresh my brain leaving corporate corporate environment potentially and then finding that center just like finding that and then creating what you've created has she done the same thing yeah she has done the same thing she has done the same thing um I was going to relate it specifically I think to movement but I lost a little bit of my train of thought you'll find it we'll find it yeah we'll find it the train has hopped off to another station, but it'll be back. I'm sure it will be back. And yeah, I just love her too. So I probably just wanted to talk about her in some capacity, but, um, and how she's inspired me to just kind of do, she's very, well, Oh my God. Is it her birthday today? Maybe that's why maybe she was coming through. Maybe that's why I kind of love that. She was just like, yeah, I meant text me no I'm just realizing she's an Aries I'm like is it her birthday today (laughs) that's hilarious oh maybe that's why she came through this has been and it's interesting because at the beginning of this conversation we prayed this was truly this is a beautiful representation of creative expression and allowing source to move as source wants to move and us getting out of the way it's a dance through communication and I didn't have questions prompted. You didn't have answers prompted. We had briefly talked about where this could go, but really the intention is to have spirit lead the conversation. Yeah. So maybe that was, maybe that was it. (laughs) It's my birthday. I know. And I love birthdays, but I got to be better about updating my birthday calendar because that is, it's really important to me. It's really important to me that I celebrate the people that I care about's birthdays because I feel like we all have so much trauma around being celebrated or whatever other baggage we got. And I just, it's important to me to like have my friends feeling special. I feel the same way. And I, I'm curious, do you think that that also plays a role because of you being adopted? Oh yeah. Because of... Yeah. That feeling of... For sure. Because there were a lot of siblings. There were six of us. And when you have six kids, it's going to be harder to like put on birthday productions Absolutely. for each individual kid, which is at no fault of our parents. And um, my stepmom growing up always used to make like the best birthday cakes and whatever birthday dinner you wanted. Like that was really special. But... I always just longed for having something more like Mm. glamorous. And then I, yeah, I don't know. So my sibling, I don't think that like my adoption specifically, actually, that's not true. That's not true. Now that you've said that I didn't, I probably didn't make that connection before directly, but um, yeah, for sure. Mm. for sure and I think my birthday is like I'm like it's the one thing I got you know (laughs) it's the one thing that's like for sure well for some people it's not which is wild to me I can't imagine I know I know that would be really uh I guess you just live with it if you don't know but but it's still it's Mm -hmm. still 
uh, when we don't know what we don't know, that's mm -hmm. where uh, it's interesting. You can find just the bliss in that. There is a lot of, I feel like that goes back to the Buddhist philosophy. Yeah. And having a child's mind in that perspective of it's all gravy, it's good. But when we know what could be, that's when we have a tendency to hyper-focus on potentially lack. Yeah. Oof. Right? That's true. That's true. Focusing on lack, it's it just pulls you further down into it, which is unfortunate that that's how the energies of the world work because... Yeah, it's like what like attracts like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I um, feel like I don't necessarily focus on abundance per se, but rather we were talking about joy a little bit before we hopped on today. And... I think that that's ultimately what I want to return to and help others return to because it's just a heavy, it's a heavy world and there is a lot of lack, but a lot of the lack is not our fault because of the way our systems are structured and like, you can't do anything about that, honey. So why are you stressing? And I hope to see things change within my lifetime and I have bigger goals on that front that will require me to do a lot of work, but I hope that one day I get to be used for um, dismantling some of these structures. And I think just by being a business owner, you are in some ways. And I think that's why I am interested in being a business owner is because I see that there's a different way of like managing these structures and ultimately my goal is to create fairness, but also create an environment where people feel valued so that they don't feel lack. Because I think that that's where a lot of that, if you have value and you have purpose, you don't feel lack. So a thousand percent. A thousand percent. I that's, think that's it's true. not a material thing. No. Of course, money is nice. Money makes the world go round. But what are you using your money on? You know, like, that's what I have to check myself on. It's like, what do I need all this money for? So I can buy more stuff. Uh, I don't need more stuff. I need to get rid of stuff. Mm -hmm. I brought all my stuff from my house to the studio because mm -hmm. I don't need it. And I would rather everybody else enjoy it. Exactly. Is it regenerative? Yeah is what you're using your whatever money you're generating. Yeah. Is it regenerating back into the community? I love that term. And my juice partner, Lydia, is focused on building regenerative systems mm. through her business models, but also the way that, well, yeah, her business models, the way that she structured her juice business is real impressive considering most juice companies rely on imported products, which is honestly fine. But if we are looking at longevity, absolutely, that is not going to work. We, why are we not growing? We have plenty of land. Why we can't grow stuff on our own and provide it to our communities. Sustainable. Yeah. So um, I've done quite a bit of work in like the permaculture and, um, I guess just agriculture space. I worked for a farm to table. Well, I worked for the farm at first and then I worked for the restaurant part of this farm to table restaurant where I'm from in Virginia. Um, and I didn't get to grow up like that. So it felt like I was kind of living mm. and healing my inner child in a lot of ways. Cause I was like, damn, this is exactly what I wanted to be doing as a kid. And I, I did not, I grew up outside of DC. Like it was suburbia, which is what most of the U S is. And it's, or where people live, I guess, but it's, it's just, we're being removed from 
what we should really be connected with. And um, that's always been a thing for me. Like, do I want to live in a city? Do I not want to live in a city? But a city is where the people are. And I want to reach the people and I want to hang out with the people. But I also like hate cars and I haven't driven in forever for various reasons, but mostly just because I don't want to. And Um, that's not a system that I want to participate in. And I feel like we need to move our bodies more and use them. And ideally they should be able to support us and carry us for quite a while. Um, but we are robbed because nobody teaches us how to live this way. So there's definitely work that I see myself doing like with kids in the future. Mm. And I was like, do I start a business? Do I become a substitute dance teacher? Like that's where my brain was at. Cause I was like, these are both mission things for me. Like I could go work with these kids and be really fulfilled or I could work with adults and maybe kids and be fulfilled. So I think it's a blend of both <laughs> Yeah, because it seems like, What you're trying to do here is create new paradigms, break old systems. And I believe that what we are really lacking in this country is a lot of things. However, one of the major things that we are lacking is an intergenerational relationship with our elders and with the youth. And how much we have to learn from folks in different walks of life at different ages and stages. Why don't people understand this? Because I feel like it's huge. This has been going back to the topic of uh, diversity in Portland. Yes. Yes. This is something that I see Mm -hmm. a lot is this, do you know what I'm kind of implying here? Yes. I'm curious what if you There's a lot of young I mean, there's a lot of young people here. Yeah. There's which... a lot of young people here, which is fine. And I think that people just hang out with who they're like. It's very mm-hmm. common here. Like there's no mishmash of groupings. I think a lot of places are like that, but it's just more obvious here to very me. Very obvious here. You lived in LA before. Um, exactly. I lived in LA before. So I'm from LA. You yeah, get it. You get it. You get it. You know. And it's um there's like a lot of group think, which is interesting because I think people perceive Portland to be like this like anarchist. Everybody's like, oh, but that's not been my experience here at all. I feel like that's actually a very small, small section of people. And I wish people would stop texting me pictures from like 2020 when things were on fire because Nothing's on fire right now. Everything's <laughs> functioning just like a city would. Um, but yeah, so like as a business owner, I see that mm. and it's sometimes frustrating for me because I'm mm. like, dang, I wish I could group have people group think with me, but <laughs> I don't really want to do that at the end of the day. So, Well, it's interesting too because... I don't know that there is a common thread here in Portland. I don't, I haven't really, I've had the opportunity to interweave myself with folks that are older. Yeah. And I, I think that it's important, but it's interesting again, coming from a place like LA Mm -hmm. where it's ever present. The old church that I went to, which, you know, both of us come from that same, that church life where we're like, what now we're What denomination were you again? Evangelical. Okay, okay. Evangelical. So you were yeah. like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I love certain aspects of that. Yeah. I'm all about basking in the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. But one of the, the foundational aspects to this church was it was an intergenerational church. Ooh. So we would have... You know, you have your Wednesday night hangouts, but with folks that are 80. Oh my gosh. Should we do this at Rhythms? I think that that's a beautiful idea. I've really, really, really been trying to get some, I don't love the term seniors, but that's, they classify themselves as that. So I think it's okay to use in this context, but they're actually my favorite age group to work with because 
they are so clear on what they need and who they are. And it is so inspiring. And I will credit my old lady gang, as I call them, until I die for pulling me out of one of the darkest depressions of my Mm. life. And they like mothered me, but not in a, Mm. not in a way that felt like, uh, they were know-it-alls or being smothering. They were just very raw and authentic with me. And, um, I'm really lucky. And they also kind of showed me and they led me down the Buddhism path Mm. a little bit as well, too. They're like, there's some teachings here that I think you could maybe benefit from. Um, And so, yeah, I want I want to be that for people one day. I want other people to experience that. And I think that it's really common to just discredit like old people as like boomers and like whatever all the boomers oh whatever and like yeah there's some problems there generationally but each generation has its purpose and they can't help it some of them can but some of them can't and some of them are goes back to our conversation about men it's like I really wish people would not group every old person or every man or every this or every that, because there's so much, so many different belief systems and reasons for being and ways of being that I think it's important to consider. A thousand percent, a thousand percent. It's not whoever's fault, whoever that group is. It's not their fault entirely. It's our responsibility to change those things Mm -hmm. if we have the space to do so but specifically I think it's important because we were speaking about men and I think I think it's a good conversation and even with you talking about rhythms and you wanting it to be an inclusive space for everyone Mm -hmm. those men who are coming to your space they are finding feminine flow Mm -hmm. with the movements that you are integrating into their experience oh my gosh Yes. So I'm like secretly brainwashing them or body washing them. Body, body shaping. <laughs> body shaping them. Can we put this on the, no, I shouldn't put this because it has to be a secret. I can't put it on the website. I mean, why not? You can absolutely put it on the website. I don't see why not. I, I do want to be like, men, 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 come. It's okay. I really would love to have a men's circle. And I'm, I have a couple of men on my radar who might be able to lead such a thing. But, um... And that's a little aside, but it is aside, but I think it's important because they're for oftentimes in those spaces, they're forgotten about. And that's what we were talking about. Yeah. Well, and and you don't want and elderly people. Exactly. Yeah. You don't want anyone to be forgotten about because it's about belonging. No, I just added a seniors class because I had this lovely, lovely woman come to a sound bath and she's in her seventies and (sighs) Yeah, I know. Like the sweetest. What's even sweeter is that she came because she's friends with 21 year old. I can say her name, Trinity. Yeah. So it was just, it's very cute to see that intergenerational connection. And um, it lit up my heart seeing the two of them refer to each other as friends. Uh, Oh, I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry because, yeah, like it's. We all get benefit from those types of relationships and oh, what a gift to be able to like, be able to pass your wisdom on to someone who actually really wants to listen to you. And she's just so lovely. But anyways, um, she just got me motivated to actually follow through with putting that seniors class on the schedule. And it's going to be seniors and beginners because Um, generally that's how we group them together because it's all kind of the same exercises, but I feel like seniors classes, you can be really yourself. Like you don't have to perform for them because they just want to get, they just want to move. They just want to move, feel good, catch up about whatever, and then be on their way. So I'm really excited to have more of them in the space and 
just more people in the space. Um, it's really only the beginning and we've been going for two months now. Um, but a lot of that time has been spent. It feels like longer because it was Thanksgiving that I started all of this. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's only the beginning. So I'm very excited to see who comes through the doors and just, not how, not just how we can serve them, but also how they can serve us. Absolutely. And I think that you really feel that in the space after classes is that Mm -hmm. people, the participation pieces is, is is a big part of it. And that's not going to be for everyone. And we're probably not going to be your studio and that's okay. Cause there's plenty of other studios that are doing other things. Um, And that's been an exciting piece too, is seeing specifically this woman, Vanessa, who started Flow in the City, um, just right downtown. And as a Latina woman of color, or as a Latina woman, um, she is really trailblazing in that field, especially in Portland. And just the environment she's creating is really inspiring Mm. to me. So there's been there's her and there's like these other spaces in Portland that I just feel like I have very good role models to look up for. And they're um, just also being their authentic selves and it's attracting a diverse group of people, which is like, it's just really cool to see. And you said paradigm shifting. So yeah, I'm here to support anybody who's team paradigm shifting because it's time. It's our time and all the stars say so. And so does my acupuncturist. So. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm so proud of you. I really am. I, I see, mm-hmm. I just see your vision so clearly for humanity. Thanks. It's heavy sometimes because I'm like, wow, it goes back to that existential kink where I'm like, Mm -hmm. what is this really the life I've chosen? But I feel like this life has chosen me just again, going back to being adopted. And it's like from my conception, I was meant to explore what it means to belong. And what a gift that Mm. is. I'm happy with it. Look where I am. I'm doing great. It's fine. So we can't be afraid of exploring the things that hurt because Mm -hmm. it's like in movement and pain science, the pain isn't an indicator always of what's actually going on. Mm -hmm. So being curious and being willing Mm -hmm. to go deeper into those layers and understand how everything um, really truly does play a role in our, in our lives and how we get to choose what to do with them. So thousand percent. Yeah. Yeah. If you could leave some sense of wisdom, some sense of offering with your truth, your voice, your Mm. story, what would you like to share with folks? Forgive now. Don't Mm -hmm. wait to forgive, find, do whatever you can to find the forgiveness mm-hmm. now and every single day. And it's a practice. It, it's not going to be easy, but we cannot be at peace and we cannot focus on our purpose until we have found forgiveness for ourselves and for the people who have hurt us. And that's been the biggest thing that I think has held me back from being happy wow. and Yeah, it's the thing that I constantly have to work on and is constantly coming up for me. Um, And just being humble with when we play a role in the dynamics that we may feel like we are owed owed something, owed an apology from. And um, Mm -hmm. yeah, just realizing that like most people are not functioning from a place of like, I'm trying to hurt you. I don't think most people are trying to do that. Mm-mm. And no. we have to be able to show each other grace and mm. forgiveness. Literally needed that word myself. So thank you for that medicine. Yeah. I, I think that like 
everything again that rhythms is is everything I also need it's my lessons but it's like you know I am not qualified to lead a sound bath but I have found facilitators who are and same thing like you know I can teach Pilates all day long but I don't feel good about teaching slow vinyasa, you know? So I think just being, being okay with um, those faults and finding, going back to that forgiveness and also working just to, yeah, I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. Mm -hmm. I feel like, yeah. That's, that just, that always comes through for me, um, Mm. this forgiveness. That's a good word. Yeah, definitely. And how can people find you? How can people find your studio? Oh, well, if you can spell rhythms, that would be a great start. So (laughs) rhythms, PDX, and it's R-H-Y. T H M S P D X dot com. And you might see us more formally some places as Rhythms Community Studio, but for uh simplicity's sake everywhere else on Instagram and um our website is Rhythms PDX. Amazing. Thank you so much for your time, for your energy. Thank you. And for this intimate conversation. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank y'all. I hope you have a beautiful, blessed rest of your day, wherever you're at. And we are sending you off with the utmost love and compassion. Goodbye. Bye. Hey there. It's Danae again. Just wanted to say thank you for sharing your time and energy with me. If this podcast resonates, please like, subscribe, follow, and share if you're willing. Reviews help too. So if you're feeling the vibe, please leave a review where you can. Sending all the love. Peace.